Hello everyone, my name is Hijab. This past summer, I was investigating the effect of prebiotic fiber supplementations on mesenteric adipose tissue of female sprague dolly rats. All right, so research has shown that there tends to be an increased incidence of osteoarthritis in obese individuals, attributed to the increase in mechanical joint loading. However, this rationale has actually been unable to explain OA in non-weight-bearing joints, such as our hands and fingers, suggesting there may be a different pathway in which obesity can contribute to developing OA. And so obesity has actually been associated with a chronic, low-grade systemic inflammation. This inflammation has then become a postulate for musculoskeletal degenerative disorders, such as OA. There are a couple mechanisms for this inflammation, but the mechanism that was the focus of this study was adipose tissue expansion, specifically visceral adipose tissue expansion. So visceral fat expansion is known to occur through hyperplasia and hypertrophy. This expansion then correlates to increased cell death. There's also an expected subsequent increase in macrophage infiltration as macrophages are indicative of systemic inflammation. Macrophages will essentially form these crown-like structures around necrotic adipocytes to degrade them. Previous work in our lab has studied obesity and metabolic health through the feeding of obesogenic diets in male rats. One study introduced a prebiotic fiber supplementation, which actually showed to decrease body fat and improve metabolic health in that, in that male rat model, counteracting the presumed effects of an obesogenic diet. And so the aim of our study was to assess changes in mesenteric fat using a diet-induced obesity model, but in female rats. We also implemented a prebiotic fiber supplementation to assess to what extent it could mitigate changes in the fat. In response to the obesogenic diet, we expect the fat to expand through the quantification of larger adipocytes and increased macrophage infiltration. We also expect the prevention of fat expansion through the fiber intervention. And so, in this study, 12-week-old female sprague dolly rats were randomized into three distinct diet-based groups. There was a control group fed chow, a group fed a high fat, high sucrose diet, and a group fed a high fat, high sucrose diet, but with a prebiotic fiber supplementation. Rats were harvested at 24 weeks and the mesenteric fat was collected. The fat was then processed and stained with H and E for the adipocytes, CD68 specific antibodies for the macrophages. We had two objective measures. The first one was the cross-sectional areas of the adipocytes, and the second one was the number of crown-like structures. And so here we have some images of our stained adipocytes. We see how the high fat, high sucrose just off the bat has larger adipocytes, whereas the other two groups have smaller adipocytes. And so then we have this frequency graph. We see that the chow group has lots of smaller adipocytes rather than larger cells. As compared to the high fat, high sucrose here in red, there were significantly more smaller cells in the chow. There were also significantly more larger cells in the, in the high fat, high sucrose group compared to both the chow and the fiber group that are brought here in yellow. And lastly, for the macrophages, we quantified fluorescent profiles by overlaying DAPI with CY3. We see a greater number of crown like structures in our high fat, high sucrose diet compared to both the chow and the fiber groups. However, this difference was actually not significant. And so in the high fat, high sucrose group, we saw adipose tissue expansion as evident through the greater frequency of larger adipocytes compared to both the chow and the fiber group. The literature actually suggests that adipocyte hypertrophy occurs due to an increased lipid uptake by the adipocytes. Now expansion through hypertrophy, for example, actually leads to cell death due to hypoxia. Hypoxic conditions are created when the fat will outgrow its blood supply due to its rapid growth. These dying or dead adipocytes actually secrete cytokines, which signal macrophage proliferation. Now, there was no significant difference between our groups when assessing these crown-like structures, which may be accredited to the idea that forming these crown-like structures is a longer process than other degradation processes in other tissues. And so fiber has also shown in our study to mitigate this expansion by reducing the um, number of hypertrophic adipocytes. This can be attributed to the fiber's ability to increase satiety and decrease gut permeability. And so, in conclusion, an obesogenic diet was able to promote fat expansion. This is suggested to promote a subsequent inflammatory response. And perhaps because of these results, these preliminary results, fiber may be used as a preventative measure for OA.